Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. Things are starting to feel a little bit apocalyptic, so I put together this hand crank phone charger. As you know, when you supply a voltage across the terminals of a DC motor, the motor spins. You get a mechanical output. But what you might not have known is that the process works backwards too. If we rotate the motor shaft with a wrench, a voltage is generated across the terminals. It's not easy to turn the shaft with a wrench though, so we can toss a crank onto the motor shaft. When I spin the crank, I'm able to generate voltage. The question is, will it be enough? A phone is charged on 5 volts, and here I'm able to achieve higher voltages than that. Of course, as some of you might be thinking, it's easy to generate 5 volts if there's no load. A phone will charge acceptably at 300 milliamps. So to simulate that, I'll attach a 15 ohm resistor. The cranking is more difficult, but I'm still able to achieve sufficient voltage. By the way, if anyone has an explanation for why the cranking gets more difficult, I'd love to hear it. Obviously the energy in needs to match the energy out, I get that, but I'd love to know what the mechanism for that is. So the thing is, even when I try to crank evenly, I'm not able to hold a steady 5 volts. So we're going to need to even out that voltage with a linear voltage regulator. Let's go with the LM317. With the LM317, we can set an output voltage, and the device clips off any excess voltage and releases it as heat. This means we have to be cognizant of how much energy we're burning off so it doesn't get too hot, but since we're not generating more than 8 or 9 volts max, at 300 milliamps this would be less than a watt of heat, which is no problem, especially with a heat sink. So let's get into how we work with the LM317. It has three pins, the input, adjust, and output pin. The crux of this device is that there's a constant voltage of 1.25 volts going across from the adjust pin to the output pin. We can take advantage of this to create our circuit. First we'll create a ground for our circuit and hold the voltage with capacitors. Then if we add two resistors like this, we create a voltage divider. And since this is a voltage divider, we know that the voltages across the resistors is proportional to the resistor values. Since the voltage across R1 is fixed at 1.25 volts, if we want the total voltage to be 5 volts, we need R2 to be around 3 times as big as R1. This will give R2 a voltage value of 3.75 volts, making a total of 5. I'll use 220 ohms and 680 ohms, as these are readily available resistor values. We'll put that circuit together on a breadboard and make sure it works like we expect. I'll use a 9 volt DC input to test it. Since that's working, we'll solder the circuit more permanently. We'll have two terminal blocks, one for the input voltage for the motor, and one for the output voltage to the phone. We'll test again with the 9 volt input, and we see we get a smooth 5 volt output. It'll be useful moving forward to know how much voltage we're generating without needing the multimeter. So we can use this digital voltage monitor. It's super easy to use, we can power it with anything from 3 to 35 volts, and we simply measure a voltage with the signal wire. We'll just attach the ground wire to our ground, and the positive wire and signal wire to our positive output. It'll then let us know how much voltage is across the terminals. We can tighten a small screw on the back to calibrate it. Let's match it to our multimeter. Time to try it out. I'll attach the motor's leads to the input of the circuit, and we see that the output is regulated to 5 volts. Now let's make this system a little more unified. We can attach the motor to this frame, and affix the circuit to the same frame. In fact, we can use the aluminum frame as a heatsink for the LM317. The trouble right now is that the motor is a bit small, and while the crank is easy to spin, I have to spin it really fast to generate voltage. Let's try a bigger motor and see if we can get a bit of a trade-off. Now I'm able to generate a steady 5 volts much more easily, even with a 15 ohm load across the terminals. Now that we have a 5 volt output, we need a way to connect a charging cable. We could just cut one open and attach it directly, but I'd prefer to have a USB connection. I'm just going to open up this car charger, you can get them for a few dollars. They're actually super useful as cheap 12 volt to 5 volt voltage converters, but for now we'll just attach our 5 volts to the 5 volt input of the USB output. The indicator light switch is on, telling us that the circuit is connected properly. Let's just replace those alligator clips with some more permanent leads. All that's left to do is test it out. First I'll try it on an old iPhone, and we see that the phone starts charging once I start cranking. I'll try it out on an Android phone too, and this charges as well. I think we can call this a success. Charging the phone all the way would of course be a real workout, but in an emergency, I'd take it over nothing. Maybe we can hook this up to an exercise bike or something to make it easier in another video, but I think we'll leave it there for now. That's all for today's video, thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.